All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to control the settings for your game activity inside of Discord. What is that? Well, if you notice here in this upper right corner here, uh, my buddy Khalifa has been playing Timberborn, Wordle, and also Expedition 33. And you can control who can see what games you're playing, uh, if it's just by server or by just friends in general or if you wanna turn that entire thing off. So the way that you do this is you pop into your user settings. It's this little gear here in the lower left-hand corner. And then if we pop down in the left-hand sidebar, we wanna go all the way to the bottom where it says activity settings. It's just above like the logout button and stuff. So the activity settings is who can see your app activity and if it gets shared. I personally don't share my activity with pretty much anybody just because when I used to have that on, people wanted to jump in when I was trying to record videos. But you can have that turned on and you can share this with specific people or with specific servers or what have you. So in this case, um, you can customize the servers that you share with. Um, I would like to share them with servers under 200 members, which is only like a handful of them. And you can actually set it to toggle all of these on or off that you're a part of, but there's literally a list down here and it can control which servers that you actually want to uh, share with. And it'll actually ignore this setting up here. So in this case, I'd be like, well, I don't want to share with this LunaVision server because it's got a bunch of people. I don't know them. Uh, this is my friend's streaming server, so they can see it on there. Memology, nah. Uh, Inzoi, no. Infinity Nikki, Second Alive, Deep Field, Helldivers, and Shrouded. Uh, all of those ones I can turn off, and then you can easily toggle them on or off as you feel comfortable changing those settings. Uh, the other thing you can do is who can join your games down here at the bottom. Uh, you can allow friends to join your games or allow voice channel participants to join your games. Uh, in general, this stuff only works if you've linked your Steam account and other information with Discord. If you don't do that, which I don't, then this, this setting really doesn't mean anything, although it would allow them to click on that, act, that thing in your profile to join an activity that you're playing inside of the same voice channel but they'd be able to see that and join anyway if they're in the same voice channel. So that really doesn't control that too, too well. I'm gonna leave this off just because I find these settings a little bit unnecessary and kind of annoying. But beyond that, if we keep going in the registered games section, the other section that you wanna look at is the registered games. And what is the registered games? Well, these are the games that show up on your computer that will pop up when you're playing them to let people know that you're actually playing them. That way it doesn't accidentally show that you're like in turbo tax during tax season. That's not a game, that's not fun, that's boring. Uh, so you want just things that you want to display publicly to show up in the added game section. Now you might notice that I have Firefox popping up here. That's because you can add things manually to this list that you may or may not have currently properly showing up because not every indie game shows up correctly as a game that can be uh, displayed. And this is also important that this shows up here because this is what allows you to stream your gameplay to your friends. So in this case, uh, let's say that I have, I don't know what, what's currently running on my um, computer. Let's say that I want like um, my G hub to show up. I can add that as a game. And now whenever my Logitech G hub driver is currently open and running, it'll show up as a playable game that I could then also stream from. Uh, if I want to remove that, all I have to do is hover over it and remove it. Although it's not letting me do that currently, probably because I had to close it. So let's do that. So now that I'm not currently playing a Logitech G Hub, I can hover over it, I can exit out to remove it. Um, you can also, if you find that there's something on this list that's not a game, that keeps getting flagged as a game and you don't want it to, you can also flag it like here and tell it that's not supposed to be a game. Uh, I should, probably shouldn't have done that because now it's going to think that Abyssus isn't a game, but that's fine. Um, 
And then I can also remove it as well. You can remove regular games or software that you've added to this list whenever you want. After that, down here at the bottom is the last section under activity settings, which is the game overlay. Now the game overlay is something that's kind of like the Steam overlay. It pops up in game. It tells you like who's in the channel with you in this little window here. And it also light up who's talking when. I don't like using this because I'm pretty good at recognizing voices and I have a whole separate monitor for my, you know, Discord and other windows. So it's kind of pointless and also it kind of conflicts with things like the Steam overlay from time to time and causes problems. But you can enable this at the top or if you want to try to support older games that are kind of janky with the newer version, you can toggle on the legacy version. And then you can bring it open or shut using the toggle overlay lock to move it around. Uh, you can set your key binding to whatever you want here at the top. Uh, and then you can change how big it is, the size, the text is displayed, all this stuff. Pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to change this little window here, this little block. And you can put that in like whatever corner you want inside your games by hitting this unlock toggle button here and moving it around. Uh, you can also set it to send you notifications for messages, going live, uh, game activity, and now playing. I don't, again, I don't really use this, so it doesn't really matter to me, but you can tweak these however you like. So that'd be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a look at the activity settings section for your Discord. So now, if you want to kind of look at what that looks like, um, it shows up in my profile that I'm currently watching uh, season 27, episode three of South Park on my other window, and that I'm watching that in Firefox, and then I can then stream that. If I jump into one of these voice channels here, I can then stream my game by clicking this button right here, this little arrow on a monitor button, and then I can share that with everybody else currently in the channel. Yes, that does mean you can have a watch party with your friends watching things on Firefox. That's a separate tutorial. But this is just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. When you're trying to share this a game with your friends, it will show up right here, and then you can hit stream. Now, the reason why you have to do it this way as opposed to just your screen sharing options is because stream sharing doesn't always give you audio. And if you want to hear proper game audio, it's important to screen share with the game capture features because they use a different system that captures the direct X features that make, you know, graphics happen on your computer. So that'd be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, this has been a look at game activity settings on your Discord profile. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.